Find yourself as soon as possible and do whatever you have to do. Play with as many people from different backgrounds. Don't ever close your mind off to any potential scenario. The people that succeed in this are just the ones that never quit and they never quit because they love it more than anything else. Oh, man, this is incredible, Stephen. To have you here, man, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. You have this storybook tale to speak about that really is kind of interesting because you have created an individual sound in the scope of this bigger, you know, royalty that you're involved with in the music industry. It really is fantastic. And you have performed with so many great bands in, a, in almost like a heavier rock sound. Yeah. And how you interpret your music, which is very different than what your family has done in the past. Very. You, you, yeah, but you've captured a sound, but you've also had some incredible influences. So I want to kind of capture all of it if we can. Absolutely. Right? And was guitar, because I know you started piano early on. Okay, so I moved here to Miami. I was probably about five years old. Maybe, maybe the first time we came, I was younger because I took my first steps as a baby at 461 Ocean Boulevard. Oh, interesting. Which yeah. is a little, you know, yeah. fun little side note. Yeah. But, you know, I grew up in this studio. You know, so I was surrounded by music, obviously, mm. and that was kind of my, my normal. You know, yeah. my normal was pretty crazy. But it was a beautiful thing to grow up around people that were just so creative and so fearless with it. And, and the, and the characters know? that you were involved with, <laughs> they, they all had these incredible personalities that were huge that you were influenced by as a young child. Yeah, well, I, I remembered where things kind of took off for me uh, as far as my interest in music. Mm. Like a lot of kids, you know, it's like, oh, you know, go take some piano lessons and learn, you know, whatever. And it was just something to do at school, yeah. really. I, I never bonded with that instrument, but I did it and it helped me understand music, I guess. Yeah. 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 When I was six years old, I was super into Kiss, but in a way I was probably into Kiss because like, you know, they were like cartoon characters. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the music was a part of it for sure. Yeah. But it was definitely like just the whole imagery of it and and like, oh my God, this guy's a demon and this dude's from, you know, <laughs> the stars and aces from space. Like I really bought into it and loved it. And my dad uh, took me to go see them on the Dynasty tour at the Hollywood Sports Tour when I was six years old. Mm. I, I went to the show and I remember seeing Ace Freely and the, and the smoke coming out of the guitar and at that point I was like, I don't know what that is, but it's the coolest <laughs> freaking thing I've ever seen. Can I curse? I'm sorry. No, not really, but go, Okay, go. okay, all right. <laughs> it was the coolest freaking thing I'd ever seen at that point in my life and I, and I remember just thinking like, I wanted a guitar, I wanted a guitar. Yeah. After that we went backstage and we met the guys in the band and when we went back there, they were already taking the makeup off. and it blew my mind oh, man. because they were just guys. Regular guys. Regular guys <laughs> from New York, you know? Like, it, it just, it, I, it shattered all the illusions very early for me. And I was just like, oh, I get it. It's just a show, Yeah. you know? It kind of messed with me a little bit, but yeah. I still, it made me kind of get more interested in the music and not so much in the imagery. Interesting. You know, Gene Simmons has even said like, you know, or it was maybe Gene or Peter said something like, do you know who your dad is? And I was like, ah, I don't care. Like, you guys are kiss. Like, you know, I didn't really, it didn't matter when, when you, you know, when you're a kid. But when I saw Van Halen live for the first time, uh, years later, that was like, okay, that's where I'm going. Yeah. I don't so, know how I'm getting there. So musically that really reached you even more. That was the one that went like, boom. Wow. Okay. What do you think it was about, you know, Van Halen? What was it about the music? There was just a sense of freedom and joy mm. and expression and fun, and they were larger than life. I mean, I had grown up and seen amazing musicians. I mean, I, I, I've, I've been very blessed to yeah. see some of the greatest of all time. Yeah, absolutely. And it's never lost on me. It's, I'm grateful for all of it. Yeah. But seeing Eddie Van Halen in his prime, you know, with you know, the original lineup, and yeah. you know, that was, if you were a 13, 14 year old kid, that was mind blowing back then. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. definitely did a number on me. And that's what got me like, okay, I got to do that. And so. Pretty powerful. I got to know Alex and just be able to hear the band at that, at that oh, those, those years and to hear God. the intensity musically of how they played and, and just the excitement that was created musically 
these guys were serious. When oh. you, you, here you are now, experience this here. What was next? Well, at that point, you know, I, I wanted to find, you know, like somebody in my neighborhood or somebody that could play, you know, play like Eddie. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, teach yeah. me how to tap, teach me how to do whatever. Yeah. And I started hanging out at Ace Music here in uh, North Miami mm. and just kind of bothering guys that could play. Like, hey, man, can you show me how to play Crazy Train? Can you show me how to do this? An interesting thing happened. You know, I hadn't been playing guitar very long, but I was in the UK. Uh, my dad had something going on over there at the time. It was like the summertime. And Zach Wilde had just joined Ozzy Osbourne's. Band. Right, right. And nobody really knew who he was, but I'd like seen him in Metal Edge yeah. or something, you know, whatever, because I used to read those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in like a hotel lobby and I'm and I, I see him and Randy Castillo, who was a fantastic drummer fantastic. and a fantastic, a different beautiful a human being. Really different. Great, wow. great guy. And they were just like, hey man, you wanna, you know, like come hang out with us? And I was just like, huh? Like, I was this 14 year old kid and like these dudes in Ozzy's band want to hang out with me. And, you know, I stayed friends with Zach and, you know, we would hang out, you know, periodically whenever he would come to town. And so he was a guy that like, like to a lot of people, he's larger than life, but he was this guy that I just met just by happenstance one day in a hotel gift shop or whatever. <laughs> the next thing I know, we're drinking beers and listening to metal and it's like, Okay, I can I can do this. I, you know, I can learn some stuff hanging out with this guy, and he's been a great friend. I've learned a lot of things from that man. You had a chance to play with him too, right? I did. I was the bass player in Black Label Society for a few years. A few, there. Yeah. So yeah. Now playing bass as opposed to guitar, wh wh what was that like? Well, the thing was is that at the time they already had a second guitar player in the band. Zach was like, "Hey, we're looking for a bass player. You know, you, you want to try out?" And I said, "Well, I don't play bass." He goes, "Dude." Learn the tunes, get a bass, <laughs> learn the tunes, we'll run through them and you know, if it works, cool. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I went to Guitar Center on Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> bought a Fender Precision bass for like 400 bucks <laughs> and went back to uh, the Oakwood Apartments and learned the songs. And then I went and auditioned, if you will. It yeah, was more yeah. like a beer drinking contest that, oh, you know, that ended funny. with us jamming through <laughs> the stuff. And he goes, okay, cool. All right, well, I'll let you know. And I was like, all right, cool. And, you know, he kind of like let me hang for a little bit. And he's like, I'm just messing with you. You got it. We're going. So that was that was kind of how I got my big break. Yeah. You know? Did you hit the road? Were you guys traveling with we that went, band? I picked up a bass uh, and then maybe, I don't know, a month or so later, we were in Japan. <laughs> And it was just like, okay, this is the new normal. Yeah. You know, and it was it was a great time in my life. It was crazy, but you know, when you speak it was about great. when you speak about the new normal, you know, you've had you've had and probably are continuing to have new normals oh, yeah. in your life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is that way. Absolutely. After that band that you're playing, so you're playing bass. Did, did you connect with bass guitar at all, or did it? You know, I love. I actually love playing bass. Yeah. I, I wouldn't necessarily refer to myself as a bass player. I'm a yeah. guitar player that plays bass yeah, and I yeah. and I enjoy that yeah, you know yeah. that's fun for me but if you wanted me to play funk or anything like that I'm not the guy yeah yeah there's plenty yeah. of guys yeah, that, that can the, yeah, yeah. really play the bass I was the right guy for that gig at that time yeah is what I believe nice and it made me a better guitar player I'm always intrigued by how like for instance right now I'm playing a little bit more piano and that's making me a better guitar player how beautiful you know what I mean? Beautiful. beautiful. And, and, you know, beautiful. for a lot of years, I played a lot of slide guitar. And that made me a better player because it made me play less notes. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. And then also now I'm singing more. And it's just strange how all your influences over the years converge. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know I had all those you know, all that, yeah. all that voice inside yeah, of me, yeah. you know? And so, but I, I, I do think that it's a really good idea to familiarize yourself with other instruments because I think it changes the way you approach your, your, main your instrument. instrument. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so singing wise, so you, you weren't really a singer, you're playing guitar, but then you, got, you kind of got involved with singing. But your, your voice quality is very different than that of your family's. Yeah. I'm obviously influenced by very different things yeah. than, than my family was. Yeah. You know, my, my dad and his brothers were influenced by singers like Roy Orbison and the yeah. Everly Brothers right. and, you know, uh, Elvis Presley. Of uh, that generation. The Beatles, yeah. Yeah. obviously, yeah. you know, yeah. the, I mean, yeah. all those things. And growing up, not just the son of a great singer, but uh, in a family of incredible singers. Mm. It always felt like, yeah, 
you don't want to go down that road, Steve. Yeah. You know, I was a soprano in my like eighth grade chorus at school. <laughs> and then when my voice broke, I didn't know what to do with it. So I was like, I'm just not going to sing. I'm going to go into this guitar thing. And I kind of burrowed myself into the guitar and was just like, that's going to be my thing. I'm going to separate myself from singing because I started to get this hunch that like, you know, because I got a lot of people saying things to me like, oh, you should just go into music. It's going to be easy for you. It's going to be so easy for you. And I started to figure some things out. The truth might be the opposite. Absolutely, man. You, you're going to have way more challenges than other people have. Yeah, it's like it might get you in the door. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it might get you in the wrong doors too mm. because there becomes expectations attached to. Yeah. You know, immediately it's like, oh, your last name is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You must... It's like, no, we'll just take that right off the table. I don't do that at all. I, I play guitar and I mostly play heavy metal. And that was kind of, eventually that just, you know, people were like, oh yeah, he doesn't do anything like that. And it was actually Zach Wilde who told me in the beginning, it's like, change your name, bro. Let's carve out a world for you that's yours. Make it on your really own. Interesting advice. Really interesting well, advice. Well, he's, yeah. a, he's a really smart guy. Yeah, you would yeah. never know it from his interviews. Yeah, yeah. But he's a very, very yeah, smart yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And he's given me a lot of good advice over the years. And that one thing at the time, it felt so strange to me because I'm very proud of where I come from. Yeah. You know, my, my dad and, and his brothers, they were incredible. Absolutely. And, 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 absolutely. And, and my dad, thank God, still is. You know, it felt odd, like I'm turning my back on my family, on my heritage. But it was almost a, as a as an attempt to uh, at self preservation, yeah. and 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 also you know that old saying you know like a man isn't a man until he kills his father. Yeah, yeah. It's like I kind of yeah. had to separate myself yeah. and create something that was mine, you know. And it, that's just that's a dicey game because it yeah. can take you down some dark roads oh, too. Oh, big time. And it definitely did that for me, mm. you know. But. What I'm grateful for is that I took a lot of risks and a lot of them were, quite frankly, could have been deadly for me. Hmm. But I took a lot of risks to go into like the forbidden areas of life, yeah. you know, yeah. in music. And I, okay, I'm going to go dark. I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this kind of music, that kind of music, whatever. Because I like all music. Absolutely, I, yeah. But when you're young and you're pissed off and you don't know why, <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going into the, you know, I'm just going to get into the heaviest metal there is. Yeah. And that was a great place to learn up for me about how, you know, how to really rough it in this business too, hmm. you know? The world, you know, whether it be the early days of Black Label Society or Crowbar or whatever, yeah. that's a no frills part yeah. of the music industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Totally so I am very grateful for all those experiences. Yeah. That were some of the best times of my life. But it looks like what you did with those bands too, and even like, you know, Skillet Head, Saigon Kick, yeah. a lot of bands like that, you know? Yeah. I think what you did, when I look at it, when I hear you playing, you widened the family's musical palette. Well, you widened it. All I've ever tried to do is, no matter what band I'm in, it's like I've always felt very much alone. Hmm. And I don't know, maybe that's just how everybody feels sometimes. But because growing up, you know, the son of a celebrity, I didn't grow up around other kids uh, that had the same experience as me. I grew up here in Miami. I was the only one. So I felt singled out and yeah. I felt alone. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, I didn't really play sports yeah. uh, until, you know, much later on. I, I didn't feel like there was a place for me. Mm. For me, it was like once I found a group of guys that played music and I found somewhere to belong, you know, like that's a powerful thing. Yeah. I, and it's kind of bigger than the music in a way. It's like, yeah, that was this, sure. a big draw for me. And what I've always tried to do is be indispensable, right. be helpful, you know, know my place and, and deliver mm. no matter what. Right. Like, and I, I, you know, what I'm, I've never ever been somebody that's out for themselves. I don't really identify with that mentality. Beautiful. It's like I am a, you know, a rising, you know, rising tide raises all ships. Yeah. yeah. And I take my associations with every band I've ever been in is like, like those are all my brothers. Like I don't have, I'm grateful to say, as far as I know, I don't have enemies. Beautiful. And that's because I love and respect everybody I've ever done this with because I know how precious it is. Yeah, yeah. Because I've had it and lost it, yeah. had it and lost it, yeah. watched people have it and, and lose, lose it. it yeah. 
so much yeah. that any day that you get to walk into a studio and, and play, uh, play music with people and make something that didn't exist yeah, 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 yeah. an hour ago. And create. Yeah, like <laughs> that, that synergy and that energy and, yeah. and that, you know, the, the kind of, the, the joy, like when you go, dude, what did we just, oh, whoa, you know, or, you know, the drummer just starts playing this groove and you're like, oh, whoa, oh, dude, okay, jump on that, let's go, you know, like that, that still excites me as yeah. much as, it excites me more than anything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. playing shows, like if you play a great show, hell, I'll take a bad show. <laughs> it's still better than anything else, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So it's like, I'm just grateful for all those moments because, you know, as for all of us, I think as we get older, yeah, it gets harder and harder to find those moments. Mm. And some of those gigs are getting, nowadays, much harder to come by. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. you know, any day that I get to do this and be around people and make all this stuff happen. But there's a beautiful sense of gratitude that you have, which is not a very common personality trait. Gratitude is important because you're, you're grateful that you have this right now. You're living in the moment to enjoy each of these creative ideas. Yeah. But I guess that had to come from your parents to a certain degree, right? My parents, you know, being, my mother's Scottish, my father's British, Australian. Yeah. Their generation, you know, they're very respectful. I was raised with good manners. I was raised to always be, you know, always be thankful. My dad, you know, to this day, is painfully humble. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's been an example that I've seen throughout my life. I mean, I've never seen him ever say no to an autograph or a picture or shaking someone's hand or taking the time out for anybody. He knows mm. why he's where Incredible. he is. A and I feel that I owe a debt of gratitude to those people too because obviously I've been, I've benefited from the fact that so many people love that music. You know, yeah. when I was a kid, I had a chip on my shoulder about it because you know, there was things I didn't like about being yeah. the, the son of Barry Gibb. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that stuff's, that's, you know, that's kid stuff. When you don't really understand how the world works, it's easy to get angry about stuff that really doesn't add up. The older Stephen, speaking to the younger Stephen, yeah. I'm sure would have some real, real deep wisdom and advice for oh, sure. Oh, God. <laughs> you take all my money. Show me the time machine, please, right. Dom. I really want to go. Your influences, <laughs> when I go back and look at influences, Eric Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Allman Brothers, Zeppelin, mm -hmm. Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Thin Lizzy. You've got some really interesting, it seems like these were influential, influential music in your life that really kind of got into the core of who you are. That's definitely the core of who I am yeah. for sure. A lot of that was growing up in the time period that I did, yeah. which was, you know, late 70s, 80s into early 90s was kind of like where all my influences. Yeah, yeah you know, it's yeah. definitely up into the early 90s. Growing up in South Florida at that time, yeah. like Almer Brothers and Leonard Skinner is, you know, was a religion yeah, down here. You know, and absolutely. You know, like I've seen the Almer Brothers on the Seven Turns tour. That was like, I guess, um, you know, that uh, incarnation of the Almer Brothers. I didn't yeah. get to see them earlier on. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that, that was massively influential for yeah, me. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, Dickie Betts, Warren Haynes, Dwayne Allman, I mean, there's just, there's been so many great players in that band, Dan Toller. I love music that was made in Florida, I do. Yeah. I got a thing for stuff that was made in the South. I grew up here. Interesting. You know, Black Sabbath made their records in this building. Yeah. The house that we used to rent, Black Sabbath moved into after we did and did Heaven and Hell. And I now live in a house two doors down and across the street from that heaven and hell house. Like, <laughs> like all this stuff is like in my, you know what I mean? It's like I have these like weird connections to things and you know, you couldn't have planned my life. Uh, well listen, heaven and hell was recorded in this room. In this room, yeah, 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 exactly yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, you're actually right, it is this room. Yeah. Yeah, but also, you know, there was a, a period of time there, you know, the 80s was a weird, but it was a good time to learn how to play the guitar. Yeah. But in the 90s, you had to unlearn right, right, right. some of that stuff yeah. and get into like songwriting and, and like, you know, it was a little bit more about the riff yeah. and about kind of like recapturing that sense of freedom again and, and angst. Interesting. But there was a guy that I saw with Johnny Winter by the name of Chris Whitley. And I saw that guy play with a dobro and a wooden box and ripped my heart out. In a, in a bar in Miami Beach one night. And that changed me forever. Hmm. Because when you can see a guy just do that, yeah. and the, the songwriting is incredible, his voice was incredible, his guitar playing was yeah. otherworldly, and his sense of rhythm, his time, and just everything about his feel was so 
beautiful. Just beautiful. greasy and nasty and yeah. beautiful. Yeah. When you see something like that, that was kind of like the next phase of like, okay, brother, you gotta you gotta open your mind up. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of stuff out there. And that was a real that was a pop for me. Well, that's an emotional journey where you're allowing yourself to be opened enough to be emotionally moved by again the power of music. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's the most powerful thing on this planet. Agreed a hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you been emotionally moved to tears at any concerts? Absolutely. Twice. And both times I was with uh, Dan Warner, who you've, you've interviewed. He was one of my closest friends. First time was uh, seeing Tommy Emmanuel play. Yeah. Just being able to see that that close. Yeah. Tommy's a beautiful human being and he's yeah. a beautiful player. Yeah. And Dan and I just turned to each other. <laughs> Tears were rolling down our face like, can you believe what this guy is doing right now? Yeah. And seeing that guy play just by himself is one of the most magical things you could ever experience. The second time was at the Royal Albert Hall watching David Gilmore with Dan again. With Dan again, yeah. And he floored us. And I think we may have cried a couple times that night. <laughs> and then, what a beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Talk about Dan for a second. I had the chance of interviewing Dan mm -hmm. a few months ago, and it was actually the, just a few days before he passed away. And we, yeah. captured his, we captured his story, and it was just so emotional. And he was such a great musician. Unbelievable. Such a, I mean, when he played guitar, it was just, he had the ability of being able to pull emotion out of any situation, whether it was with your dad or was it with Barbara Streisand, no matter who, yeah. who, who, who was. He's who probably was. the most effortless guy yeah, I, yeah. I know. And what was your relationship like with Dan? Dan Warren is one of my best friends. Yeah. It's, I, I have to say that from the very first time I met him, which was probably when uh, he did the Guilty Pleasures record with right. uh, my dad, which uh, I co-wrote with my dad. Hmm. You know, there's a few people in your life, if you're lucky, you meet them. Yeah. And from the, from the moment you first come into contact with them, you're like, that's my kind of guy. Yeah. You know? And me and him just connected. There was never anything but, but love and laughter and music for me and him, you know? How much more could you ask for in life no, to have met someone like that and be able to have learned from and experienced with and emotionally connected with at concerts? Yeah, it was an absolute blessing. You know, we mentioned Tommy Emmanuel. Tommy Emmanuel, who I've heard many, many times perform, is such a spirit in how he plays and such a very, very deep person. Incredible to, to experience this. What, what motivates you? What motivates me? Wow. That's changed over the years, you know? I think that for a, a long time, especially growing up in the, in the, in the world I grew up in, yeah. and I think this is probably the same for most people, and, and maybe, maybe it's also a bit of a male thing, but I, I, I always had this sense of I had something to prove. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was just ego, I, I don't yeah. know. You know, when you're younger, it's just kind of like, you know, I wanna get in the game, I wanna, I wanna, you know, I wanna compete yeah, with yeah, you guys, I wanna, yeah. you know, I wanna be a part of it. I've always had so much love and, and, and admiration for music of any kind, really, that it was just like, I just always wanted to do it. I think over the years, particularly, I think once, once I got sober, my motivations for many things in life changed. Interesting. But I realized not long after I got sober that I'm just as happy to sit on a chair with my guitar and play alone, in my house or anywhere, I'm I'm just as happy there as I would be playing a gig or you know like like the guitars. It's just my thing. I this just is beautiful. I this just is love it. This I don't beautiful. even care if I'm any good at it. I just love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think that that's something that I just hope I don't die without getting the music out that needs to be out. Of yeah. me. I think that I and this is something I've kind of picked up from my dad and I and I've come to agree with him over time, yeah. is that I think that music is all around us and it's accessible to all of us. Mm -hmm. All of the music is accessible to all of us all of the time. And I think that some people just have certain antennas for certain things, yeah. you know? And the way we sharpen that signal, that frequency, the way we tune in, everybody tunes in a little differently, yeah. you know? You may have to practice playing the guitar for 20 years before you pick up that frequency. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> like I remember practicing Van Halen licks in my room for years and they were horrible, you know, <laughs> and I would play along with the records and I knew it sounded terrible. <laughs> and then one day the dots connect. Yeah. And all of a sudden that opens up that channel. And so it's like, it's like a new frequency gets 
or a new neuropathway connects with the universe mm -hmm. or something. And then it's like, oh yeah, that's over there. Cool, I'm gonna tap into that. Because my dad always says, he's like, oh, I just have the, I just tune to the frequency. I get into that space, the flow state. The flow state, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. maybe it's that. Yeah. But the thing is, yeah. is I think you have to not be afraid of it. And I think that, I think as, a, as an artist, as a, as a player sometimes, the worst thing you can do is get inside your head and and get in the way. Oh, I'll, I'll, allow know? fear to be a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's been a problem for me yeah. at, at times yeah. in in my life. You know, particularly as as a singer, it's like oh, I don't want people to hear that. Yeah, yeah. If you practice and you're not, and you get it to the point where oh, I can do it without making a mistake. I can't do it and make a mistake. Yeah, like yeah. that's where you need to get to with it. And then it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I can just do that. Yeah, that's the best feeling in the world, you know. To like, I can l watch a YouTube video of myself or whatever, and I'm like, I'm thinking, that's terrible. I can hear myself thinking. Yeah, and you can hear, you can hear people think. That's a very, very powerful line. You know that it's it's like almost like thought is the enemy of flow. You know, Absolutely, that, that, that concept of yeah. So how do you put yourself? How do you put yourself in the moment to allow yourself to let the antenna go up, to find that frequency? One of the things I am a big believer in now, I, I definitely think waking up early is big, not drinking too much coffee. Like I, the best days and the most productive days are roll out of bed and get to a guitar as soon as possible. Hmm. And just stay out of the way. Just doesn't matter if you start playing scales or whatever. Some pretty decent idea will usually happen. Hmm. At that point, it's like, okay, I can I'll get my iPhone out or whatever. And sometimes I'll just, you know, hit record and, and I'll just play for a while. And it can be nonsense. And then I may not even listen to it for a couple of days or a month or whatever. And then I go back and I listen just for fun. And I go, oh, there's something. Yeah, yeah. Once you kind of identify with the thing in there, then it's just like, okay, cool. And you start building stuff, call up your friend, hey, let's jam, let's do this, let's, you know, whatever, let's get it going, you know, and just not be afraid. I think I've been afraid for a long time. Interesting. Too. What, what, were you, what were you really afraid of? What was the fear? Well, I think that for a long time, I had fear that I, maybe I wasn't good enough or this wasn't going to work out for me because of where I came from yeah. or, you know, the odds are stacked against me, it's yeah. too much pressure, and that stuff just kind of, that's just garbage. It's, it's just, it's not real, you know? And I, there's a book by a guy named Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art. Not The Art of War, mm. The War of the Art. The War of Art. And it turns out this is a common thing, you know, a lot of us <clears throat> artists, musicians have imposter syndrome on some level, or we start to feel less relevant, mm. or maybe our ideas aren't good anymore, or, you know, we lost that spark. And so, like, for me, it's really about, I think it's about living life. Mm. And I think it's about being less selfish and being more involved with other people and being inspired and exposing yourself to things. Because you can, you know, you can play the drums, I can play the guitar, yeah. but if you don't live your life, what are you gonna write about? Yeah. What are you gonna be inspired yeah. by, yeah. you know? I mean, sometimes I could be watching a freaking commercial on TV and you'll just see something and it's like the way this, you know, two people are interacting and you get an idea and you go, oh, that's, wow, that's actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, yeah. but that commercial is making me think about the relationship between my daughter and I. Yeah, yeah. And maybe there's something in that that's worth exploring. And yeah. it's just, you just have to be, you have to be aware. Yeah, yeah. And I think that meditation is important for me. Yeah. I like the effect that has on me overall. Mm. Taking care of your body, you know, being physically fit, eating well, and trying to clear the negativity out of your life. It's a big challenge for anybody. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think when you get into this music thing, um, you know, things are flying at you all the time. And there's a lot of disappointment and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of crazy things that happen. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's easy to get burnt out. It's easy to get jaded yeah, by sure, things. Sure, sure, and sure. I think the thing for me is that, like I was saying to you earlier, like, even if it's a bad show, yeah. I still get to do this. Yeah, yeah. And, if I'm lucky, you know, someday I'll look back and be like, well, that was an interesting ride. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think the thing that makes me the saddest about music is that people don't value it the same way anymore. Hmm. 
And I don't know if that's cultural. I don't know if I'm just getting old and crotchety about stuff. Well, it's changing. How, how people listen to music, and it's changing, and yeah, how we relate to music. But yeah, but it's, I think that it's something that's happening all around us. Yeah, yeah. And I think that music is just getting, it's just part of it. Yeah. You know, I think that for me personally, I just, I know what's valuable to me. I know that music is valuable to me. I know that, uh, you know, family is valuable. Yeah. I know that friendships are of the greatest value yeah. and, and yeah. the way that you interact with another human being, whether you know them or not, yeah. is valuable. You know, you can change somebody's life just talking to them. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And yeah. music has that ability as well. Like music has an ability to connect with someone when nothing else can. Yeah. I think why we do this Absolutely. is because it connected with us once upon a time in a way that nothing else could. Yeah. And it made us feel something and it made us go, I want more of that. Yeah. Whatever it is, I, I, I gotta have some of that. Yeah. I gotta figure that out. It's also it's also purpose. It seems like you have a real purpose. You know, you've got a you're purpose driven in that you sense you sense your your responsibility mm -hmm. that in the music industry there are people out there that are gonna be influenced by what you're playing, by your music, and there's a way of lifting people up through this power of music that's really very important to do. It's incredible. I mean, I can tell you what I've seen. You know, it's one thing to be off stage and, and, uh, and watch the Bee Gees, you know, yeah. over the course of my life, and then, you know, see them do that was incredible. Yeah. But to then be on stage with my dad, which is pretty cool in and of itself. Absolutely. Like, you know. That must be wonderful. That must be such a joy for him. It's, I think it's been one of the most beautiful things that's ever happened. Yeah. For me, I'll speak for myself. I think he, he really enjoys it too. Yeah. I think that's the only way he, he really knows how to connect with people is yeah. with music. Yeah. So we have that bond because of music and I'm grateful for that. And we've gotten to have some pretty incredible memories doing that. And you know, I feel honored to be standing anywhere near him mm. musically. Like, yeah. I really, I just want to see him continue to give his gift. It's yeah, his gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if I can be helpful in any way, I just want to be there to help. But it's not about me. I get up there and I'm just like, go, go pop, do your thing. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And I wouldn't trade it for anything, yeah. you know, for sure. But you're in a very special situation, Stephen. You really have a, you really have a unique situation. In the fact that you're, 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 you're creating your own thing. You've got your own thing mm -hmm. inside this bigger thing, but your own thing is really growing and has a voice that is clearly, it's clearly Stephen. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm finally ready to yeah. unleash that. I've been a supportive player mm. for the last, I guess it's about 20 years now. You know, mm. I've stood next to some giants in, in my eyes. Yeah. I've been very fortunate yeah. to play with certain people over the course of my life. And, and, I've, and I've enjoyed the experience of being you know, a supportive player and, and, and the opportunity to learn. Like, everything is an opportunity for me to learn. Nice. I know that nice. you know, the best feeling is like, oh, I don't know how to do that. And I'm probably gonna make some mistakes on the way to figuring out how to do that. <laughs> but on the other side of that, yeah it's gonna be pretty awesome. Yeah. And that ride's gonna be cool if I can just, you know, drop the fear and go. And yeah. so now, it's like after doing that for a number of years, and I'm all, obviously always willing to lend a hand anywhere, but I, you know, I think it's time that I, I release some of my own music finally. I think I've sat on it long enough. Yeah. yeah I'm just starting to find myself as a singer. It's, it's time for me to really explore, you know, my own kind of thing and whatever happens with it, it's whatever. Wherever it goes, the fact that it's totally from the core of who you are, that's going to be present, that's going to lift up to the next level. So this is the joy, this yeah. is the joy of music. Yeah, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to do. I think I've spent enough time in silent judgment of myself, yeah. like whether or not, oh, your songs aren't good enough, or your voice yeah, isn't good yeah. enough, or this isn't good enough. And none of those things are true, you know? It's getting back to that war of art thing. It's like, yeah. there's this thing inside of me that wants me to not do what I was put here to do. <laughs> what is that? I don't think it's like that for everybody yeah. that creates, but I think it is like that for a lot of people yeah, that create. Yeah, yeah. I think that crippling self-doubt yeah. is a thing. And some of that is you know, it's just cultural too, yeah, you know? I think yeah. like it's like, you know, people like to, you know, like to punch down sometimes. and and. Sometimes you just punch down on yourself, you know, and that's, 
that's no way to do it. You have spiritually evaluated yourself this way, that mm -hmm. you've come to this, these terms, and th that awareness itself, that's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, well. That's pretty powerful. I appreciate that. That's really pretty much. powerful. Yeah. That's from getting, you know, getting clean. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Makes a big but difference. That's how beautiful that is when you think about it, you know? It's we have this, these young kids that listen to these interviews from, you know, 50, 60 countries. It's amazing. Wow. And the comments on them and the inspiration that they get from them, and as they hear you speaking and your spoken word, as they go back and research your music, they'll do the homework in what they do because your message is very, very strong for them to hear. Yeah. In closing, Stephen, what would you say to this next generation as far as what can guide them along the way so they can maybe not have experienced or maybe they should experience some of the journey that you've been through? Hmm. What would you share with them? Be a sponge and learn as much as you can. Practice as much as you can for as long as you can while you're young hmm. because those big chunks of time become less common yeah. as we get older, you know, just from being alive, there's a lot of responsibilities, especially trying to carve out a career in this business. But I would say, find yourself as soon as possible mm -hmm. and do whatever you have to do. Play with as many people from different backgrounds. Don't ever close your mind off to any potential scenario. If somebody says, hey, I have a reggae gig and you don't know anything about reggae, go do it. <laughs> because when you're done, you'll know something about reggae, right on. even if it's, yeah you don't ever want to play it again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But Absolutely. I think that when you're young, don't say no. Mm. If you're lucky enough to carve a career, you grow up to be able to say no every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think that if you're doing this for the right reasons, then it'll be the right thing for you. I, I think that we live in a time, it seems like a lot of people get into music because they think, you know, they're going to be rich, or they're going to be famous, or they're yeah. going to be the, like, Trust me, that's not the fun part of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know anybody that has those things yeah. that wants them. Yeah, yeah. You know, money's nice, yeah. but the people that succeed in this are just the ones that never quit. And they yeah. never quit because they love it more than anything else. Yeah. And if you really love this, and this is where you feel safe, this is your world, music, yeah. then just open yourself and go. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do it because some of the best stories we've ever heard are from people who are told they can't do it. Absolutely beautiful. And Stephen, you have really kind of reached a level of individuality. You, your purpose of playing music, your passion is screaming loud and clear. Continue on this journey because you're changing lives. And for that, I thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tom. <laughs> I appreciate that very much, sir. Beautiful. Now I'm Fabio here at the Sessions panel. This is so exciting. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Click the subscribe button to be a part of what we're doing. The views help us tremendously. All of your comments, we read them and react to them. This is incredible. The support you're giving us is great. The Sessions panel, we'll see you real soon.